So I'm just uh, pulling out of our place uh, first thing in the morning and I've got a job in a sweet gum tree. We got the popo -po parked across the street. So I'm gonna put my seatbelt on. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, job in a sweet gum tree. Um, not anything too big. You know, it's not pruning out the whole thing and removal or anything like that, but it's a, a stem, like a portion of it, a good sized portion fell down and it's kind of hanging there. So I've got to uh, climb it using my new rope. I think I'm gonna use my new rope today. You know, you can never have too many ropes. So I got a new rope and I'll climb it. And uh, ideally the way it's gonna go is that I'll tie up the limb so it doesn't go anywhere and then chop it and drop it or free it and loosen it or something like that. I showed that climate change was a fairly big issue for a lot of people. All right, so I got the beast in the driveway and here's a look at that sweet gum. It's a big one, big one. And that's the dead limb right there. If you're not familiar with the sweet gum, uh, it's characterized by these little dudes. Kind of look like gumballs. It's actually the sap that gets the sweet gum description. It's got those palmate leaves where the veins emanate from the beginning. Star-shaped, can't miss it. All right, before we get going, here's the loadout. Uh, we got just a couple ropes. This is my new climbing rope. See how that works today. Throw bag and line. A couple shorties just for dragging stuff out. A top handled saw, 194T. Hard nasty. Basic stuff, hand saw. Nothing too fancy on here. A couple slings, a backup belay device. A couple of lanyards. Oh, and then... Uh, and then ascending stuff. I'll be using the Rope Runner Pro today. And now I just need to attach the rope to the throw bag line and send it up. I just use a, a sequence of self-tensioning knots. So I'll put one at the base and I kind of do a wrap and then I'll put another one here. Just so that it tightens up on itself. There we go. All right, so now the rope's up in the tree and I'll tie an alpine butternut squash knot here for my base anchor. I find this works pretty well. I like the alpine butternut, it's just good. So we got that there. Seems to run pretty well on this rope. Might take a little dial in it. If you don't have one of these guys, you just move this bollard or whatever it's called down a notch, but it's feeling pretty good like that. Alright, here's a first look at this limb. Uh, broke off up there. I don't know what's holding it. I guess the other thing that's characteristic about these sweet gums is this rough bark. These guys are considered hardwood and used in like plywood and stuff like that. It's not like an oak or a maple. Right, so I would start chopping it but I kind of want to get it secure first. So let me do that.
All right, so this is the rope I brought up for this. And it's got a figure eight in the end of it. I'll probably just leave that. Oh, nice. All right, this is the top. It looks like it's just held on right there. Like not too much. So I'll just put this sling on it, which should, which should actually have some cinching ability. And I'll hold it. There we go. Okay, the top is secure. Now I can work my way down and sort of piece it apart and then come back up and uh, release the big chunk. Probably lowering it. All right, same deal, just kind of disassembling it. I'm gonna go right there and take those off. Bottom half, excised. I just gotta climb back up. All right, so now I'm back up top where this chunk is and I think I'll be able to manhandle it and kind of lower it down. Alright, there it is. Alright, one last thing I wanted to do was to nip off the cut. You can see some of that sweet gum coming out. They're just sappy trees and I figured I could give it a nice, uh, a little bit beyond collar cut here. Oh, almost left the sling behind. Okay, that is the sweet gum uh, job. After lunch, I've got another pruning job and I guess I'll take you guys along.
Now most of that is just with my uh, small shears, but I do use my big boy loppers from time to time. Um, I'll put a link to these guys. I got them on Amazon a couple years back. They're badass. So with this kind of like organic pruning job, I go for a little bit of undercut, just to give it like a little bit of definition. Kind of rough still, you know, not like sharp lines. I've got a, you know, whizzer uh, cutter with me, but I'm not doing that. I'm going hand cut, a little undercut, could use a little more there, and then some shape off the top. I'm making the big cuts in the bush, so you don't see, you know, big chopped ends up here. So this kind, this, this part, we got kind of rough draft, it's looking okay. I'll come back through one more time. And then right now I'll do the top uh, on a ladder. Okay, so that's my organic bush prune. Get a little undercut going on, get some shaping, but at the same time, it looks kind of rough cut, you know? It doesn't look like it was hacked up with a hedge trimmer or something like that. We've got uh, respect to the fence line, but not a rigid, rigid fen fence line. Again, it's got some organic shape to it. You know, kind of shaggy, but at the same time, at least kind of shaped in the way you want it. And the same thing over here, you got some respect to the fence line, but not a rigid line.